Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We have had a great week looking at the Word of God to believe Him for divine life. No matter what the seasons throw at us where the world is preparing to get sick because it's this time of the year, I thank God that we are able to prepare ourselves ahead of time that instead of going out and taking all kinds of different drugs and things, we can take the Word of God and begin in the divine life of God. That before sickness and disease even touches us, we're prepared ahead of time to walk in divine life. And when you're walking in divine life, you're able to resist sicknesses and diseases. So we've come a long way. We've already had a look at it every day so far. And so if you missed any of the sessions, please make sure you catch up. Because we have found it on the Word of God, we saw a number of things. Number one is that God is our healing God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Anybody who ever came to Him was healed of all their diseases. And then we are told from the Word that He bore every sickness and He took away every disease at the same time that He died for our sin. And so the same way we are free of sin, he bore away sickness and he bore away disease that by his stripes we are healed. We're not the sick people trying to get healed. We're not waiting for healing. We are healed. And even if symptoms show up in our body, we can resist them. As you submit to God and resist the devil, he will flee. And so even if we did something to cause that destruction, he sent his word to heal and to deliver us from every destruction. And that by his stripes we've been healed, we can now stand against sickness and disease. And then through training and discernment, we can learn what is it that hurts us. And so now we're able to go forward and make sure that we don't do things that cause sickness and disease in our life anymore. And God will heal us and restore us to life and restore us to health and heal us of our wounds and deliver us from every destruction. Hallelujah. Now, all of that was a whole bunch of scriptures all put together, and you can take that and study it out, and you'll see it's the Word of God, and we can now stand in agreement that if we are healed, we're going to live in that healing and resist sickness and disease. And so yesterday we ended off by saying that, remember Psalm 107 verse 20, that God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And as I've said before, we can do things that cause sickness and disease. You see, I can eat the wrong food and sometimes just eating the wrong thing can compromise our immune system. And so if we are in an environment of sickness and disease and our immune system is compromised at the same time, then a person can end up getting sick. But that was my destruction. I ate wrong. I did the wrong thing. Maybe I ate wrong. It caused a bad heart or, or bad something in my stomach or something in my body. If somehow I abused my body and it caused the problem, well, God promised to heal me and you. And so we can stand in agreement. He sent his word to heal. I received that word. Now I'm healed. Then what happens is I can also be restored out of that problem. And he says, not only will he restore health to you, he will also heal you of your wounds. So whatever that sickness caused, you can be healed from that as well. So the body can be restored. And we saw in Hebrews 5 verse 14, Paul said that solid food belongs to those who are full age. In other words, mature. That is those who by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So that reason of use is talking about practice. You see, uh, I can train myself by listening to the Word of God, studying the Word of God. You very quickly can pick up if you're about to enter into a situation that's going to cause you to sin, the Holy Spirit can tell you, no, don't go there. Don't do that. I'm, I'm trained to listen for that. So if he says, don't even read that article, or don't even pick up that book, I won't do it because I know in times past, I thought, oh, that's a city. I can read it anyway. I, I know what's right and wrong. And then just reading what I saw got down inside of me and it took me a few weeks to work that thing out using the word of God to get back to what the word says. So learn to trust that, practice that. Now I do the same with my food. 
So when I have food in front of me, I, I trust the Holy Spirit. As I'm eating, I go, okay, no, don't eat that. But eat this food. This is healthy. That's not. And it may be different from person to person. You find some people can eat something and not even bother them. Whereas I found out there's certain food things that if I've eaten it, I feel very lethargic and down the next day. I found that it affected my physical training. I also found that uh, I opened myself. I, I ate something and I thought, you shouldn't have eaten that. And then there's a result in my body. And I need to learn to trust that. Because God's not only sent miracles to heal me out of things that I've caused in the past, but he also teaches you how to avoid the things in the future. So now how do we train ourselves? How do we get to that place where we can stand firm in healing? Well, let's begin here in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And this is an outstanding, and this is really good teaching, coaching that we could use in any other area of our life. But today I'm going to apply it specifically to healing. Proverbs chapter 4, look at verse 20. The word says, my son, give attention to my words. Now, give attention means you're going to focus on it. Now, remember when we say words, today in our context, we said God sent his word to heal. So now I'm going to give attention to healing words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So that means I need to hear it. That's why we make these messages available on MP3s so that you can get the messages and put them on your phone so that you can listen to them in the car while you're driving. Listen, I also like music and, you know, it's nice to have music playing in the car every now and then. You're driving along, have a bit of bop bop going on. That's nice, but that's not going to heal me. I want the word. So I, I spend a lot of time in the car when I do, I drive, when I'm driving, I make sure i got the word playing. And that's just something I've learned has helped me. If I have a gap in my day, I've got it on the phone, if I'm sitting, listen, if you go to, <laughs> let's say you're going to the doctor, you know, you know, you need to go, now the symptoms got so bad, you want to go see the doctor, you're sitting there, you know what it's like sometimes in most doctor's rooms, you'll end up sitting there an hour or sometimes two waiting for the doctor to come. Don't just sit there staring into space, looking at all these sick people, sneezing and coughing and thinking I'm in the bad environment. Yeah, no, get your earphones in, put the word on, listen to the word, listen to the scriptures. And while you're sitting there, feed yourself on the word of God. By the time you go into the doctor, he may even check you and say, I don't know why you're here. There's nothing wrong with you. Amen. The healing power of God's at work in my body. If he does say something, this is in your body, say, well, praise God. I am healed. I believe I'm healed. Now let's just treat the symptoms. Hallelujah. So you see, you're pumped with the word of God. You're giving attention. Get it in your ear. Read it. Listen to it. And so get these messages so you can listen to it over and over and over and over. It says in verse 21, do not let them depart from your eyes. Get the scriptures in front of you. Write these scriptures down. Type them out on your computer. Have it so that you can read through them. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How do you get it in the midst of your heart? You speak the word. As you speak it, it goes down into your spirit. Why? Verse 22, they are life to those who find them. The word of God is life. Get a hold of this. The words are Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63? He said, my words are spirit and they are life. Get a hold of that. Uh, you know, we sometimes think of words as, as audible sound. And it is. Like I'm speaking to you right now. It's my vocal organs that are activating the sound waves. And those sound waves are carrying through the air, picked up by equipment, recorded. And then they are transferred into your television speaker which activates sound waves and that activates your ear and your ear picks up the vibrations and your brain interprets it as words. That's the mechanics of it. And if we were reading something like Shakespeare or anything else, it's just information. It's just words. It's, it's something that somebody wrote and they can maybe transfer emotion through it. But you see when God speaks, it's more than information. It is literally his spirit released into those words. So when he says, I am the God who heals you, 
He releases His Spirit in that Word. That Word carries the Spirit of God for healing in those words. Even then they record it. And then you draw it off the page and you speak it. That same Word is activated with that same Spirit. His words are Spirit and they life. There's a life force. So when I say, by Jesus' stripes, you are healed. I'm not just informing you about the truth, which is so. You've learned something. If you've never heard that before, and someone hears that for the first time, they say, really, I didn't know that? Well, now they know something more. But when I say, by Jesus' stripes, you are healed, the life force of healing is released in those words, carried through the airwaves. And when you hear it in your ear, it drops down in your spirit. And that's where the life is. Listen to what he says here. Verse 23, keep your heart, not your blood pump, your spirit man. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of the heart, the spirit man, spring the issues of life. That's where the life force of God's healing takes place. So get a hold of that. The body is what's carrying the symptoms. Your spirit is already healed. You are healed. By stripes, you are healed. Now, when you feed that spirit with that word, you read all these scriptures I've been giving you and you're confessing them. As you say it, that life force goes into your spirit man and it charges, it activates the life of God. And that life is what comes out of you into your flesh. And if there's anything in that flesh that is contrary to that word, any sickness, any disease, anything under the curse, that life of God destroys that sickness and disease. Destroys it. Amen. Just the same way an antibiotic can kill a bacteria, the word of God annihilates that virus. It destroys it in the name of Jesus. And that, even if you have cancer in your body, the Word of God, you take this Word, speak it and declare it and thank God for it. That Word is at work in your heart, in your spirit, out into your flesh, destroying that cancer in that body, in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, whatever that destruction may be, any pain, anything that's hurting that body, the Word of God, the life of God, there's such a strong anointing on me now. It's flowing into you in the name of Jesus. Receive it. It's working, and it restores that body, heals that body. Remember Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says, There's one who speaks like the piercings of the sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The tongue of the wise promotes health. Well, what's a wise person? Someone that will take the wisdom of God's word. This wisdom is for life. This wisdom is for life. Take this wisdom of God. Internalize it in your heart. And what does it do? It promotes health. When I'm speaking it, the tongue, the tongue, speak it, speak it. I don't go around saying, oh man, I'm so sick today. Oh man, I'm hurting. Oh man, I'm in so much pain. No, don't say those things. Speak life. You speak health. Because that's what happens. The Bible says it is health, medicine to your flesh. And so literally, the Word of God is medicine stronger than anything any doctor could ever give you. And so take it and apply it in your life. How? By speaking. Remember Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, let's go there. This is a foundational scripture to know how faith works. Mark chapter 11, and you see here verse 22, Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in this word. Have faith. Know that his word is yes and amen. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Now, that mountain may be a sickness or disease. Something seems immovable. Maybe someone's been fighting something for five years. It becomes a mountain. And I don't want us to just relax and say, oh, well, I suppose that's my life. I just have to put up with this. No. Stand up against that thing. It may be a mountain. and may seem immovable. But he says, if you say, be removed. Be cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, when you pray, 
Believe whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And so here's the key. Believe that what you say happens. So you address that sickness. You address that pain. You address that thing in your body. And you tell it, this is far enough. You leave my body now and be cast in the sea in the name of Jesus. And you speak that and believe because you said it, it'll happen. And that's what it is. You're declaring the word of God. Remember Hebrews 4.14 encourages us, seeing then we have a great high priest, that's Jesus. He's passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, hold fast your confession. Keep speaking that word. Don't move from it. Keep declaring the word of God. Psalm 103 verse 1. This is David and he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Listen, he's telling his mind, his will and emotions. Remember, don't forget what's happened. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul. Forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities that happen on the cross and heals all your diseases happen on the cross and redeems your life from destruction, saves you out. Even if you caused it, he redeems you. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies and satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's the power of God's word. Hallelujah. And so I declare you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we have had an awesome time this week in the Word of God. And I believe that that Word has transformed your life, that you walking in divine life and divine health. Now, here's the good news. You can be a part of ensuring that this Word gets to as many people as possible. We receive by faith what God has given us, but now we know we also believe the Word of God where Jesus said, freely receive and freely give. And many, many, many people have partnered with us to make sure that this word gets out to as many people as possible. See, here's the thing. The word of God is what transforms and changes lives. What's going to heal people? The word. See, you can't buy your healing. You can't pay for your healing. Jesus paid for it on the cross. So no amount of money you give will get you your healing. Don't let anybody con you into that. You don't give money in order to get healing. It's a free gift from Jesus. Here's the thing. When we sow our seed and we give our offerings, it's so that this word can be preached into somebody else's life. Remember, he sent his word to heal and he sent his word to deliver. Well, we can be a part of sending that word forth and making sure that that word gets into somebody else's life. And that's what we do around our giving time. As you know, Friday is a time for us to sow our seed into this ministry, trusting God for what He's done in our lives and that we can be a part of spreading the Word of God and establishing a harvest for our provision. And that's why we have this promise from God where it says in verse 6, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity, God loves a cheerful giver. And so as a result of that giving, we see in verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound towards us. And we will always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. And I want you to know that's what you are. You're part of a good work here. And I want to pray for you. If you've sown your seed and you're making a choice to do it today, there the details are on the screen right now. As you sow your seed, I'm coming into agreement with you. Number one, this word will go out and reach somebody who's never heard the word of God before and they'll get saved. Number two, people that hear the word of God will have their lives transformed and changed. And number three, a harvest back to you. According to Jesus, a hundredfold, we're going to stand in agreement with that. And I want to pray that blessing with you now. So thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for your giving. We receive it and we receive by faith the harvest due to you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my friend and our partner today. 
that you would bless them in the name of Jesus. According to the promise of your word, I believe your grace abounds in that home, abounds in that business, abounds in my friend's life in the name of Jesus. They always have all sufficiency for all things and abundance for every good work. We praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I believe that you've received from that. God has answered that. The details are there. And once again, remember, if something does happen, that will write to us. Let us know your testimony. Love you. We'll see you later. God is our healing God. God. In a time and age when technology has advanced so rapidly, it is vital for the church to continue living by faith. faith. Now, this is a collection of messages that I've taught over the years. In this series, Alan Back answers questions like, Is healing for healing today? For today? And if so, will God, will heal, God me? heal me? He also deals with misconceptions like, Does God Does use God sickness, use to, sickness punish to punish us? Fill your heart with faith, faith and you will stand, stand against the sickness and disease. And disease. Alan Bag teaches practically on how to overcome sickness, empowering your spirit man. So that that help can look out into your, into your flesh. flesh. In this teaching, Alan Bag will equip you with practical tools to live in divine health, as well as to actively combat and overcome sickness effectively. You can stand strong. So when sickness does try come along and try to take you, you're able to withstand it and come against it. Against Order the single teaching. Our Holy Spirit Health Shots on MP3 at this price. If you get the power collection, then you're going to get this one for free. free. If you would like to purchase the Healing Power collection on MP3, we will also include the teaching Our Holy Spirit Health Shots as a free gift. Purchase these online by visiting our website or if you prefer, contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries by making use of any of our contact details. Just wanted to remind you, make sure you get yours today because this is a vital, vital message. If ever we needed a message, it would be this one so that you have it with you all the time. I would encourage that you listen to this at least every day, if not maybe two or three times a week on a regular basis because it's, it's like taking vitamin supplements. Just keep feeding your spirit with the life-giving Word of God and that way you can walk in the divine life of God. So you can get that today on this MP3 or download it or get it because you want to get it onto your phone where you can hear it easily. And then we're also making available this power collection, which is a number of series. It's 12 parts that, of messages that I have taught over the years that are just a collection of healing messages that are going to help build it's every aspect of healing, anything that people may have used to try and talk you out of healing, maybe discourage you. Does God heal today? Will He heal you? I'll answer all those questions from the Word of God. And so that is a great collection to study it out. Then if you get that, you get this one free with that. So make sure you get yours today. Well, it is the weekend. It is our time to get together in our various places of worship. I really want to encourage you, if you're not yet part of a word-based, spirit-filled church, get to one. It's important that we gather together as a family. Even though you watch Christian television, make sure you're in a house where you're serving. Let that pastor know you're there to be a part of the vision of that house and stand in agreement that you reach your city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're in Cape Town, you're looking for a church, we got many campuses. The details are on the screen. You're welcome to come and be a part of it here. And if I am in the building, please come up front and come shake my hand. I'd love to meet you. And we can just celebrate God together. Other than that, you have a great weekend. We'll be together again on Monday. I look forward to being there with you. This is Alan Bag reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at allenbagministry.org. 
Allen Bank Ministries is online. On our website, allenbankministries.org, you can find out more about who we are, what we believe and what we stand for. You will also learn more about what the ministry consists of, our vision, our focus and of our main involvements in the community. On our website, you will also find some of Allen Bank's speaking engagements, as well as any up and coming ministry events taking place. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. We also have the latest month's television programs ready to watch in the event of you having missed the program or if you'd like to meditate on the powerful messages. On weekends, you will be able to participate in our church services by enjoying the live streamed services or our special event services streamed from the Bay Christian Valley Church. Allen Bag Ministries also have a large database of related teaching material, so you can further your study on the topics handled on our programs. If there are some things you require answers for, our library of related teaching materials will assist you tremendously in gaining understanding in those areas. We have also made an opportunity for you to get involved in our projects and vision through our online giving facilities on both our allenbagministries.org website as well as the Bay Christian Family Church website. There are many ways that Allen Bank Ministries would like to assist you to succeed and prosper in your ministry. So visit us online and together we can make a difference in this world. Allen Bank Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details.